Well, we are here in Providence, Rhode Island. I'm so glad. We're providentially with some providential. What do we? What's the? Provident. The, the people who are from Providence are called. Uh, never heard cool. Of <laughs> anyway, we're in Providence, and we're at Kate Colby's house. Thank you, Kate, mm -hmm. for having us. Thanks over. for coming. Yep. And Lainey Brown is here. Hi, Glad Lainey. To be here. And Anna is here. And Leanne Brown. Hello. And hi, Leanne. And we're talking about a poem by Rosemary Waldrop which is called Stein as Exact Resemblance, Exact. And it comes from a book or a section of poems that might have been a chapbook, but anyway, is a section in this book, Blind Sight. And the section is called As Were. And there's one about Leonardo, Montaigne, Goethe, Mallarmé, Kafka as son. Stein, Musel, Robert Musel, uh, Zukowski. And this one is the Stein one. And I have asked Lainey Brown to read it, will you? Yes. Okay. Stein as exact resemblance, exact. Strangely simultaneous, the larger the crowd at work. Strangely identical phenomena, the more distant yellow splashed. Chatter, angelic gesture, polite honey, so beguiling strangely. Did spend time to be meant among opaque, could save the sentence. Did spend into the world, once an angry man is no wiser a sentence. Goes on elsewhere, dragged we think along the ground did spend. When we listen, astounding, no longer listen, the midst of bewailing. When we listen, a temporary umbrella, a candle, a quart of sleep, of swept water flushed out of sound, out of sound, when we. Plenty of space, plenty of ordinary, plenty of present, with plenty of dust to cover a single event, and no comma, it's nothing. Means nothing in spite of assembles, assembles plenty. Leanne Brown, um, exact resemblance. It's a really important concept in Stein, but also a, a phrase that's very, that echoes. Exact the, resemblance to exact resemblance. Yeah, and that's from the Picasso portrait. Oh yes, right. Mm -hmm. right. And what does it mean, in Stein's hands, exact resemblance? Well, she always says there's no such thing as repetition. So, because because every time it repeats, it's a different thing. It's because of the reverberations of it, and like repetition of variation. There's a variation because there's another, like the very end, meaning means nothing in spite of assembles assembles plenty. That second assembles is very different than the first. So. Exact resemblance has the same unusual definition as uh, repetition. You think of repetition as same old thing, heard again. So exact resemblance means something new. Replication is not repetition. So what's, what is radical about that? I mean, there's a lot radical about it, but Kate, where do we start with the radicalism of that idea? We haven't even gotten to this poem yet, but dig in anywhere you like. Well, that you can't get, there's no essence to be accessed. Right. There's only reverberation. And Stein's sentences reflect that. And... Do Rosemary Waldrop's sentences reflect that too in this homage poem? They certainly do. Um, it's so funny to see her being so much her Rosemary Waldrop best here, and yet so very Stein in her. It means that there's a lot of Stein sentences. in Waldrop. Yeah, but her, she really, I, I think of Rosemary as more um, de invested directly in metaphysics and that then Stein, um, and that really comes out here. So she's mm -hmm. playing with Stein's sentences and her sort of torqued syntax and like uh, closed loop ideas and meanings, but mm -hmm. she's, she's really 
working in metaphysical mm. So their philosophical grounding mm -hmm. or origins are very different. Uh, a footnote here, uh, we are here in Providence, not far from where Rosemary Waldorf lives, and the reason there's a Providence relationship here, even though this book was published by New Directions in New York, um, but the Waldrops have always, for a long time, run the Burning Deck Press, which is here in Providence. And so it's a pro I think of this as a Providence poem. Okay, Anna did spend time to be meant among opaque could save the sentence. Can you teach us? <laughs> You're looking at me, what is going on? Can you disentangle it? Is it worth disentangling? What's this opacity thing? Well, that's often something that's said I love about. Asking you a hard question. Well, thanks, it. thanks, pal. Um, <laughs> that's not often something that's said about Stein, right? Like her work is so opaque; it's so hard to understand, mm -hmm. um, which implies that if a poem is opaque, it's not good because you can't see it. You can't see through it. It's not clear. The meaning is not clear. But I think this poem is really celebrating opacity. It's celebrating the opacity that makes Stein. Um, the poet of defamiliarization, the poet who gets you the furthest distance from the way that you typically use language and therefore the closest to understanding what language ever actually means. Hmm. Well said, thank you. Leanne, Hello. so you love Stein, you love Waldrop. Are you loving the same thing? Oh man, mm -hmm. <laughs> no. no very uh, different. Yeah, very but different. But it's nice to see them converge. Sure, I mean, that's one reason I published Rosemary Waldrop in my press, Tender Buttons Press. Tender Buttons Press, which is speaking of Stein, is your press. To Stein. So but you care about Tender Work Buttons. that comes after Stein and takes those permissions and those lessons to, you know, make new work. And mostly women writers that have done that. That's what I focused on. But, yeah, she, she this is a, I, I, I never have seen this poem before. So it's, it's a revelation that where she, like you said, it's very much rosemary, but using the Steinian kind of permissions to do this. I don't see Stein ever using the word plenty of space. I just don't hear that. Like you said, the, the physics and the, the, the science language, metaphysics, physics of metaphysics. Yeah. So Lainey, take us a little further then. Um, okay. Yeah. I want to start with the first word, strangely, mm -hmm. and then the repetition of strangely. Um, so what does it mean to make a word strange? What does it mean for a word to be strange in the mouth? So something happens when we say a word over and over, right? And we start to meditate on it differently. But also I'm thinking about translation and exile and living in more than one language and this idea of um, repetition that isn't repetition as happening in this poem. Mm. In other words, making something strange or making it new or thinking of resemblances differently, thinking of precision and exactness differently in the context of Stein and uh, Rosemary Waldrop's work. Mm -hmm. Kate, you're, you as a poet, influenced by Waldrop, but what about Stein? Are you influenced by Stein? And what has Stein taught you? Um, yes, Stein has taught me how to look, just look and look and look um, and try to translate vision to language but language words are always shortcuts and placeholders mm. and to try and circumvent those placeholder qualities of it by making it strange mm. Um, mm. so not seeing strangely so much as saying strangely to reflect the strangeness of seeing itself. wow mm. Mm. Anna, yeah. it's Stein as exact resemblance, right? It's not Stein's exact resemblance. I'm writing about the uh, concept of exact resemblance from Stein. It's an homage poem to Stein as the others are to Leonardo and Kafka. Mm. Stein as exact resemblance. That's a little different. I would love for you and Leanne to ponder that. Is she saying that she has managed to figure out how Stein herself is exact resemblance? It could be that, or Rosemary could be doing similar work that Stein's portrait of Picasso does to Picasso. Which is? Well, the idea is that it's a verbal portrait of Picasso. It's, it's a poem that does resemblance in language as opposed to in figurative painting. 
Because I, and there's that, there's an extended stanza that's about exact resemblance to the exact resemblance, the exact resemblance of exact resemblance. It repeats it over and over. And what's so great about exact re resemblance when you're thinking about portraiture is that it's kind of a paradox because resemblance means that you are nearby to something. Like you could say you resemble a parent. It means you're not exactly like them. It means you're, there's echoes of your parent in you and you and your parent mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So the idea that you can have like an exact resemblance is this like paradoxical thing. Mm. And that gets played out in the language of this poem, right? Um, that there's poems that, or the, the stanzas each begin and end on the same word, mm -hmm. or sometimes mirror each other of the same phrase, mm -hmm. but it's not exact. Yeah. It's this, it's the way that the language then kind of constructs maybe a portrait of Stein, maybe a portrait of Rosemary through Stein, maybe a, a portrait of what it feels like to be mm -hmm a poet looking back towards Stein and maybe just putting yourselves next yeah. to each other. Yeah. That's great. I, I think on, part, sorry. no, that's great. I think partly what you've said here is that we, the exact resemblance comes from the portrait of Picasso. Mm -hmm. So you have Stein doing Stein in the portrait of Picasso. And now you have Rosemary Waldrop borrowing from the portrait of Picasso to do the portrait of Stein. Right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Picasso did the cubist the portrait of Stein where, and the painting that's in the Met. I mean, too, it's like that. And, the, mm -hmm. and also, but I love that sentence, when we listen, a temporary umbrella, a candle, a cord of sleep. To me, that's very, like, tender buttons. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like, it's. I, mean, I think of their house, too. Yeah. Like her, all these, these house, objects, you know, this collage today, yeah. of objects. Yeah, yeah. A right. court of sleep, yeah. Let's yeah. get final words on this remarkable poem, starting with Lainey, final thought. Okay, I'm going to go to the last line. Means nothing in spite of assembles, assembles plenty. And I'm thinking about how there's a resistance to this idea of dictated meaning and space is not insisting a certain reading or a certain punctuation. In other words, like that's what it means to have plenty. Great, thank you. Kate, final thought? Um, I... Um, thinking about the idea of presence and the manifestation of presence in this poem and how it relates to how Stein effects those things in tender buttons um, with the repetition. Um, but also she's sort of um, doubling down on it by using Stein's very language. Mm. Cool. Very great. Anna, your final thought? Uh, I just want to cheer for means nothing in spite of assembles, assembles plenty. I mean, that is kind of what Stein's tender buttons do, right? That there's, when you first read it, it, it can be hard to discern like what the meaning is, but the longer you spend, the more, the more time you're in the poem, there is in spite of the, you know, in, in spite of the surface level meaninglessness, it does mean plenty in, in the assemblage, yeah. in the assembly yeah. process. Great. Good. Thank you. Leanne? I'm still wondering about the of swept, water flushed, out of sound, out of sound when we, period. That to me seems very mysterious, like that we, period, that we, you think it's going to be a, a verb after it. Yeah. Yeah, it's because in the beginning it's when, when we, we listen, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that mirroring is Yeah. Great. This is great. Uh, my, my final thought has to do with the last sentence, which I think Lainey talked about earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Means nothing in spite of assemblies, assembles, assembles plenty, which is saying, yeah, well, maybe it's really, really opaque, but in fact, there's plenty going on, yeah. right? It's as simple as that. Well, thank you all. And thanks to Kate's kids for joining us. You guys like Gertrude Stein? <laughs> they're not they're not you talking. They're not talking. Yeah. Well thank you so much for joining us for this. Thank you. Thank you.